In my last video, I introduced you to Commodore's two entries into the home Pong console market in 1977, the 2000K and the 3000H. In that video, I showed you a demo of them working, but because I'm in the United States, the video was going through a converter box and the quality wasn't great. The 2000K wasn't awful. You can see there's some ghosting visible, but overall it's tolerable. The 3000H was a different story though. At times, the picture wasn't even viewable. It was bad enough that it would have affected gameplay. So in this video, I'll show you how I converted both of these devices to directly output composite video and show you the results so you can compare. Let's get started. I'll start with the 2000K. Let's open it up and have a look inside. Okay, over here is the wire that connects to the TV. So we know that's an RF video output signal. What else do we know? Well, on the underside of the board here, there's an MOS 7601 microcontroller, but knowing that doesn't help us much. There are no schematics for this board that I'm aware of, and there's not even a data sheet for the MOS 7601 available. So for all I know, there could be Morse code coming out of the 7601, and that's somehow being converted to an RF signal. The RF signal is coming out of this metal box over here, so I'm going to pull that out and see if I can learn anything from that. Yeah, this little box probably tells us everything we need to know. I don't see a part number anywhere that would allow me to look up exactly what this is, but the manufacturer is clearly marked as Aztec. This is just an off-the-shelf RF modulator. These things were used in a ton of consumer products in the 70s and the 80s. The RF signal comes out here. This wire is a ground. Now, this is where it gets interesting for us. This terminal block over here has three inputs. And again, without a part number, I can't look up exactly what they are, but I'm going to guess that they're audio, video, and power. The 2000K outputs audio from its internal speaker instead of via RF. So I'm assuming that what's connected here is a composite video input and a power input. To find out, I'm going to connect my logic analyzer to both of these wires and view in analog mode. Now, you don't need a logic analyzer for this. Any oscilloscope would work, but this is easier for me to connect, so I'm using it. I'm not going for a detailed analysis of the video signal here either. That's beyond my level of knowledge. I just want to confirm my guess that one of these is power and one is a composite video signal. So I expect one will be a straight line and the other one will look like a composite video signal. As a quick aside, there's a great Hackaday article that shows what a composite video signal looks like. I admittedly don't know much about composite video signals, but for this, I don't really need to. I just need to know if what I see on one of these wires looks similar to what I see pictured here. I've got the logic analyzer connected now so I can power it on and see what it looks like.
Okay, it looks like that was a valid assumption. The one on the top does appear to be a composite video signal, and the one on the bottom looks like it's power. This should be remarkably simple. The board appears to be generating composite video already. I just need a wire and RCA jack to the composite video pin and ground. There's nothing more to this mod. I've got everything back together here. This mod didn't require any type of cutting or drilling holes in the case or anything, so it's fully reversible. Instead of the RF lead coming out of the back of the case, now it's just an RCA connector. So let's get it connected to my TV and see how it looks. Wow, that's quite an improvement, isn't it? I'm recording this with a camera aimed at my display, so what you see here is exactly what it looks like on the screen. I'm not using a video capture device here. As a reminder, here's what it looked like before. And here's some before and after video of the football game. I'm done with the 2000K. Now I'll open up the 3000H and see if I can accomplish the same composite video mod on that. Here's where the RF lead connects to the board and goes out the back of the case. I expect this metal box is the RF modulator. It's not the exact RF modulator that was in the 2000K, but I expect it's also taking in a composite video signal as input. I'm gonna start by removing the RF lead.
case I ever want to reverse this and put it back to original, I'm going to put this screw back in here just so I don't lose it. Now I'll remove all the screws that are holding the PCB to the top case half so I can look underneath the board and see what's going on with that RF box. The power connector has a little retaining nut holding it to the case. I'll need to remove that. There's an RF shield here that I'll need to remove. I'll need to desolder these wires here because they're preventing me from lifting the PCB to access the bottom. I'll crank up the heat on the desoldering iron because that RF shield will act as a huge heat sink. This blob of stuff here is the RF modulation circuit. The RF output lead was connected down here. I'm gonna make a guess that these two lines up here are the power and composite video inputs just like on the 2000K. I just need to probe them to confirm. To do that, I'll need to connect the logic analyzer here, but there's an issue. The DC power input is back here, and if I have power connected, I can't tilt the case open very far. If I had batteries on hand, I could use those. Since I don't, I'm going to have to probe with the case almost closed. My guess was correct. That is a composite video signal. Same as with the 2000K, now that I know where the composite signal is on the board, I wire up an RCA connector and put everything back together.
I have it all back together now and you can see that it's not a particularly invasive mod. Same as on the 2000K, there's an RCA jack on the back now instead of an RF lead. Well, let's see how it looks now. Oh, that's amazing. I don't know if the RF modulator was going bad or the conversion box didn't like the signal, but pulling composite video directly from the board has certainly improved the display. Just as a reminder, here's what it used to look like. I'm going to call this a success. The paddle controllers on the 3000H need some deoxit, but that's another video. I hope you enjoyed watching. I'll see you next time.